Thank you so much for the opportunity to share my story today. My name is Tina Kondos. I am 54 years old, a proud mother to my beautiful daughter, Isabella, and a grandmother to an amazing little boy named Ryder and another little love on the way. I am also a daughter, a sister, an aunt, niece, and a friend to many. I am passionate about many things, but I find the most joy in spending time with family and friends focusing on my purpose, and living in the present moment. I consider myself to be an ordinary person, but there's something important I haven't shared yet that makes me quite different. I have a rare and terminal disease called pulmonary arterial hypertension, also known as pH. And without treatment, the average survival rate is less than five years from diagnosis. PH is a progressive and life-threatening disease that is complex and often misunderstood. It is high blood pressure in the arteries connecting the heart and the lungs. This can lead to restricted blood flow and the lungs and lower oxygen levels in the blood, eventually weakening the heart muscle and creating heart failure. PH is a disease that genuinely makes you feel like you are suffocating. I describe this disease as a slow death. Some common symptoms that patients experience are shortness of breath, chest pain, heart palpitations, lightheadedness, and fatigue. But the shortness of breath, it's not just a mild discomfort. It's like breathing through a straw. And the chest pain is not just a twinge. It's a constant pushing weight on your chest. And the lightheadedness, excuse me, the dizziness is not just a momentary lightheadedness. It's a persistent feeling of being on the verge of passing out. So, this is where my story began. When I was 21, I started experiencing a variety of unusual and debilitating symptoms. And despite this, doctors would often tell me, you look great, there's nothing wrong with you. That's um, the story of my life. And because I appeared healthy on the outside, my symptoms and struggles were frequently dismissed, which was incredibly frustrating. It took nearly seven years to link my symptoms together, and I finally received an official diagnosis of scleroderma. Scleroderma is a rare autoimmune disease that can cause inflammation and fibrosis in the body. If it's not managed properly, it can harm blood vessels and organs, including the heart, the lungs, and the kidneys, leading to pulmonary hypertension. There is no known cure for scleroderma or pH. I've had health challenges due to scleroderma over the years, and it wasn't until I turned 35 that things became more serious. I was diagnosed with left-sided heart failure, and I needed more aggressive medical intervention. At that time, doctors never told me that pH was a concern. In February of 2022, I spent three weeks in the ICU due to advanced right and left-sided heart failure. It was during this time that I was diagnosed with severe pulmonary arterial hypertension due to complications from scleroderma. 30 years ago, I experienced symptoms that were early signs of my current condition. However, the delayed diagnosis allowed the disease to progress, worsening my heart failure, and making my condition more severe and difficult to manage. The emotional impact of knowing that my disease might have been better managed if it had been caught earlier was devastating. Research indicates that one in five patients with pH experience symptoms for over two years before diagnosis. This delay can happen because symptoms often resemble those of other heart or lung conditions, such as congestive heart failure, COPD, asthma, pulmonary fibrosis, or if patients are not being treated by pH-specific specialists. pH has significantly changed my life, severely limiting my physical and social activities. As a result, I am now permanently disabled. Feelings of fear, anxiety, and isolation are constant reminders of the unpredictability of this disease. And many patients with pH and other rare diseases face this reality every day. Currently, my disease is progressing faster than medical treatment can keep up with. I now rely on oxygen support, which has become necessary for my day-to-day -day functioning. 
I have a pacemaker defibrillator that acts as a personal bodyguard, so that's super cool. And then in May, I had a cardio MEMS device implanted in my pulmonary artery. This device allows my doctors to monitor my pulmonary artery pressure closely in real time, providing more opportunities for proactive treatment and reduced hospitalization, which is crucial for us if we're always in the hospital. <laughs> I have a central IV line placed in my upper chest, through which I receive a life-sustaining medication. The IV line is connected to an external pump that I carry around every day, all day, every day. <laughs> and it continuously delivers this medication. Currently, I take 12 medications. One of the new drugs that I started taking last month is a subcutaneous injection, which the FDA recently approved this past March. This medication provides new hope for patients by offering a treatment pathway that has never been available before. Please. The disease symptoms are often debilitating, and the medication side effects are paralyzing. The ultimate goal is always to improve our quality of life, but there are many dark days where I question which is worse, the medications or the disease. My medical team and I often joke that with all my implanted medical devices, I'll soon become a robot, but I'm okay with that because these devices have become a part of my life. While they come with their own challenges, they have significantly improved my quality of life and allowed me to manage my disease more effectively. Okay. After being diagnosed with pulmonary hypertension, I realized the importance of thriving and not just surviving. Finding support from the Pulmonary Hypertension Association restored my independence and sanity. PHA's mission and vision are to extend and improve the lives of those affected by pH. Their vision is a world without pH empowered by hope. And this purpose was something that spoke so strongly to me. So I became a peer mentor for the Pulmonary Hypertension Association to further its goals and support the community that has become my extended family. So I've obviously shared a lot about myself and here's the reason why. Despite the challenges, I hold on to hope. I know that hope can exist even when time is limited. Oh, I made it this far. By sharing my experience with pulmonary hypertension, I emphasize the need for better support and understanding of rare diseases like mine. I hope for new treatments and trials, and for policymakers to continue supporting legislative changes that impact patients' lives. Advocating for increased research, improved diagnostic tools, and better care is crucial. Through continuous research and advocacy, we can improve the outlook for patients with pH and other rare diseases. Many of you in this room provide hope that someone sitting in here might be part of creating the next life prolonging medication. Each discovery, each new treatment brings us one step closer to a cure, giving us reason to be optimistic and inspired. I extend my deepest gratitude, sorry, to all of you for your time and dedication to assuring the patient's voice is heard for pH and every disease. I'm not giving up, and I urge you to not give up on me or the millions of other others living with rare diseases like pH. So, the next time you have the opportunity to listen to a patient's story, consider taking action and ask yourself how you can improve that patient's journey. Thank you.